Welcome to the beautiful Highlands and here at the Global Energy Stadium, the wait is finally almost over. After four and a half months of the unprecedented situation caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, Ross County Football Club are ready to embark on a new and exciting season. And we'll be with you to tell you the story, the highs and lows, the twists and turns of the Premiership campaign, along with match presentation from games here in Dingwall, exclusive interviews and access around the club. As we get used to the new normal, we await the day the ground can be bustling with supporters again, but until then, we welcome you on our journey for the 2020-21 Scottish Premiership season on RCFC TV. Well, thank you very much for joining us here at the Global Energy Stadium. Welcome along to our special preview programme, looking ahead to the start of the new Scottish Premiership season. And I'm delighted to introduce our top pundit we've got for this season, former Northern Ireland international Stephen Craig. And th Stephen, thank you very much for joining us. How good is it, after such a long wait, yeah. to be talking about getting back to competitive football? Well, it's great, isn't it? You know, we're here at the stadium building up to the new season. You know, I think speaking to players and, and managers throughout the country, it's been a tough time. You know, there's been a lot of changes with how they have to approach training, how they approach the games coming up. Pre-season games on, pre-season games off. Um, but there seems light at the end of the tunnel. And ultimately, with football on the horizon, you know, we really can't wait to get started. Naturally, you know, stadiums aren't going to be full. But I think people just getting back playing football. Football keeps us sane until the referee blows his whistle. And then we all lose a plot again. But it's exciting and we're looking forward to it. We've been a bit envious here in Scotland looking at other leagues as they finish their campaigns, albeit, as you say, in empty stadiums. What do you think we can learn from what's gone on in other countries and what will be the, the main effects that, that players are feeling out there? Well, it's going to be tough, isn't it? You know, it, it's, it's almost, I think, for players and managers to learn on the game. You know, players are going to have to, you know, make their own atmosphere drive their own intensity in the game. They're going to have to force the issue. Um, I think some clubs will benefit more than others with regards crowds and, you know, not being there. It'll be interesting to see how away team's form is compared to, you know, what it normally is away from home and, and, and the home side having the majority of the support. So um, I, I think it'll be work in progress for players, for managers. They've had pre-season games to try and get used to it. There's mixed reaction. Some like it, some are not too fussed on it, but, you know, they're going to have to make it work. And it's all about getting the 90 minutes under your belt, trying to get the season up and running, trying to get points on the board. Um, and I think the players will you know, come accustomed to it as it progresses. Everyone is learning about themselves, about the group. Do you think that perhaps maybe at a place like this as well, it could galvanise the group into a, a more togetherness at Ross County? Possibly, yeah. You know, I think it's, it, 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 it's such a close-knit squad anyway. You know, Stuart in charge, you know, as a young manager, he's got a, a decent enough squad. He's made some signings, which we'll talk about as we go on. So um, you always get the feel when you come to this football club, everyone's pushing in the same direction anyway. So I imagine Stuart will use it as a, as a galvanising kind of tool to say, you know, let's stick together even more. Let's go and show what we can do. You know, there'll be more people watching on, on TV. There'll be more streaming going on. So there's a chance to go and showcase who Ross County are and how good the players are and you know, how they can stamp their authority on Scottish football this season. So um, it's not normal we talk about, but it's still exciting because the new season's just around the corner. Well, there's plenty still to talk about and thank you for now, but I'd like to also introduce you to another of our additions in the broadcast team, and that is Jamie Lyle, and he's been catching up with the manager, Stuart Kettlewell. Stuart, we're only a couple of days away now from the big kickoff. How ready do you feel and how ready are the players for the season ahead? I think given the circumstances, uh, we're probably as, as prepared as we can be. We would like more game time. Um, obviously, that's, that's the one element that's been a real challenge for us all. But I think all the teams are in the same boat. So um, the weekend pass probably gave me a real uh, enthusiasm. It made me feel better coming away from Celtic Park on Sunday, knowing that we had two 90 minutes under a belt over the course of the weekend and that um, a lot of your guys had performed well and there was plenty for me to think about. So um, I'd said way back at the start, we weren't going to make any excuses 
in terms of how we how we thought things should go. Um, we were always going to be led into a situation and, and we were just going to have to make do with what we had. So um, from my point of view, I feel the players are ready. I feel we've got a strong group and I think we're, uh, we're more than happy to, to make that start on Monday night. How difficult has it been preparing a team under these circumstances in, in the middle of a, a global pandemic, a lot of uncertainty around when you're actually going to get back on the grass and back playing again? Again, I'm, I'm big in not making excuses in anything we do, so um, it is what it is. It'd be very easy if something doesn't go right for us to put it down to the global pandemic. But for, from my point of view, I think we've had great support running about this football club, starting from our chairman, Cascade, and all the way through the staff and the players. So um, from my point of view, the, the support I've had around about me and this change of role and Stephen obviously moving into chief executive, the support's been absolutely tremendous. And the players' attitude and application has been right on the money as well. So ultimately, anybody that's sitting in this position just now that's not chapping at the bit, ready to go and play football, is in the wrong end. Where are you looking to improve this season, Stuart? I think tenth last season, probably not where it's fair to say anybody at the club would have wanted or expected to finish. Where, where do those improvements need to come for the campaign ahead? I think fundamentally we, we'd said that staying in the Premier League last season was the big challenge, that was the task at hand and, and we've done that. We're, we're not going to come away celebrating as if we have won a league title or anything like that. Um, obviously we would like to try and improve on tenth. In terms of giving you a number and telling you where we're going to finish, I think that that's, uh, that, that's probably a silly way to go. Um, we have had a, a principle run about here for the last few years of having our targets in-house, making sure everybody believes that we, we have a set target, something that's going to stretch us, not something that we just feel within our comfort zone. Um, and in doing that, then I think we'll challenge our players, we'll challenge ourselves, myself included in that. Um, and I think if we, if we do that, we have the, the potential and we have the group here, the talent, uh, the work ethic to, to go and have a a real good season um, but I, I believe there'll be another 11 clubs will be sitting saying the same sort of thing so um, as human beings we're dealing with and it's important that we get the best out of human beings and, and in saying that 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 will have a, an outcome of where we where we finish in the league Well, it was an interesting move with Stephen Ferguson going upstairs to the CEO position and Stuart Kettlewell taking sole charge yeah. of the team what did you make of that choice? Well, I think it keeps continuity, first and foremost. You know, Stephen and Stuart obviously have a, a very understanding relationship. They trust each other in what they're doing. So the fact that, you know, Stuart will have Stephen above him with regards to issues and transfers, I think that maybe takes a little bit of pressure off Stuart. He can focus more on the coaching side and be on the pitch. Richie Britton, of course, has stepped up from the, from the reserve team to, to be assistant manager. Don Cowie has retired now to become first team coach. So... I think Roy McGregor likes the the uh, the fact that these players have an affinity with Ross County. You know, they've played here, they know the club, they know the community. This club is built on community and kind of bringing everyone together. This is the focal point of coming to watch Ross County in a home game. So uh, I like what Roy's done. I like how he's kept everyone involved. And, you know, they're a young coaching team, but they're enthusiastic. They want to learn. We've watched them training this morning. And, um, you know, they'll certainly be ready for the first game of the season. Do you think Stuart will have a target in mind in, in terms of a league placing? I think what you do as a manager, a coaching staff and players, is you want to improve in your previous season. And I think the three things that stand out are that you know they conceded too many goals, 60 goals in, in, in what, 30, 31 games is too many. Uh, they didn't score enough goals, I think 29 goals they got. And they only won two games away from home, albeit away to Motherwell and Aberdeen who had a decent season. So if you can improve in every one of those uh, kind of areas, it can take you up the league. So. You know, there's no doubt they will sit down privately, they will have aims and targets. If they can meet them, then I have no doubt they can push towards the top six. Well, and the recruitment will be very interesting and we'll come to that later. So thank you for that for now. But one very important move that is that Ross County managed to keep a hold of Ross Stewart, who was very much in demand over the summer. But he's still here and he caught up with Jamie earlier. Well, Ross, it's been a long old pre-season for you guys, nearly five months without a competitive game of football. I imagine you're all just itching to get back into it, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's been a long time um, coming, obviously, with the, with the scenario that's happened and, you know, with the boys, you know, you get that feel that it's maybe coming to the first game of the season, which is, and you can tell that with this, uh, the intensity of the training. You know, I, me personally, I can't wait as well. And, you know, you can tell in the, the, the dress room that... Um, a lot of the boys are on the same, the same boat. So how's lockdown been for you then, Ross? Five months out of the game, five long months. What have you been able to, to get working on during that break? 
Yeah, I think, you know, like I said, I took the chance to, to keep the fitness, topping the fitness levels up. It was a chance as well to, you know, coming back for, from injury just before um, the, the sort of COVID kicked in, it was a chance to really get myself fit and get myself back to, you know, where I wanted to be in terms of fitness, in terms of feeling, you know, injury free. So it was, it was a good chance to do that. And, and now that the, sort of, the period's over and I've, I've come back, I've, I've felt good pre-season and, you know, I'm just really looking forward to the season starting now. Yeah, quite naturally after your, your performances, your goals, your the way you led the line here at Ross County last season, there's been a, a lot of speculation about your future over the summer. Where do you see yourself this season and beyond? Just right now, I'm just solely focused on you know the first game of the season for Ross County. Um, it's always been a bit of speculation, and, and as a player, that's always nice. You know, that there's, there's clubs out there that probably gives you the feel that you're, you're doing well, but. You know, I've, I've said you know I really enjoy my football up here. I've, it's never been never been in my head to leave, but um, I'm just really looking forward, you know, to the season starting now and, and giving my all for this club. As a player, what does it feel like when you're in the middle of a, a heated Premiership match against Motherwell, for instance, in, in a few days' time, and there's no fans in the stadium? There's, there's silence all around you. <laughs> all the <laughs> shouts have been heard. That'll, that'll be that'll be new to me. I can't say it's something you know that's that's happened. Um, it's just everybody's going to be the same, so it's just going to be something as a player you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to motivate yourself in whichever ways you can. Um, without the fans, it will be strange, but you know, hopefully, it won't be too long before they're back in the ground because as players, you know, you, we need them. Obviously, it's great what the, what the club's done here. You know, to let fans see, see, see every game um, they can. It was a, it was a great idea, and it's one you know as players, you know, we're, we're fully back. It's great to. Hopefully we can just as players, you know, with them watching, put put on a show and try and win games and give them something to look forward to. You know, we're fully back it, and you know, hopefully, you know, we can just do well for the fans. Brilliant, Tom Ross, thank you Tomano. very much. Well, Stephen, for a debut season in the Premiership, seven goals, eleven in total for Ross Stewart. Just how important a player is he for Ross County? Well, he's vital. You know. I quite like the fact that, you know, he probably proved a few people wrong. People probably have thought he was a championship player. I think he'd been in St Mirren in the Premiership and never really got involved. Played some championship games, so it was a big season for him last season. Probably to convince himself that he could play at this level. Um, but he's here at the minute. You know, there still could be interest. I mean, the window's now open until October. It's bound to happen though, isn't yeah. it? That's a sign, that's well, it a sign is. of that's good a, players. Well, it's a sign that someone's doing well. So that will be a fear for Stuart. You know, there's no doubt the fact that he could lose such an important player. but. He seems happy, he, you know, he's content at the club. I think they're a really close-knit bunch, uh, the players. So, you know, to get him playing, get him scoring goals um, will be a big asset this season, will be vital this season. You know, we've said 29 goals, probably isn't going to be enough. That's going to have to improve. Everyone's going to have to take responsibility. But with him being the centre-forward, the one that everyone's looking at, he's going to have to carry a bit of the burden. What are the key attributes that allow him to stand out? Um, the fact that he's versatile. You know, he can, he, he can play as a centre forward, he can play in a front two. Uh, I've seen him playing behind as a number 10. He can play off the left-hand side, which is helpful for diagonal balls, particularly here at the Global Energy Stadium, because it's not the biggest of playing surfaces, so you can go a little bit more direct and, and, and kind of play off second balls. So I think he has that, but I just like the way he moves with the ball. You know, he, he takes it in well, he links up the play well. He's getting better as he gets older, you know, which is vital to playing at the top level, because when you play at the highest level, you have to improve round about. You can't stick to your own game, you have to adapt. I think he's adapted very well. Um, and, and more often than not, when he's on form and he's linking up play, Ross County are better for it. There's a, there's a good group of strikers here though, isn't it? Is, is the issue maybe fitting them all in? Well, that's up to Stuart, you know, but I imagine if you asked Billy Mackay and Lee Irwin and Ollie Shaw and, and, and Ross Stewart, where would they like to play? I want to play as a number nine, I want to play straight through the middle. So Stuart's going to have to adapt that. I think in pre-season he's done it already. You know, Lee Irwin, has played off the left, Ollie Shaw has drifted out to the left, and it's probably taken Ollie Shaw a little while to settle. He came in in January, they spent a bit of money, the team weren't winning games or scoring an awful lot of goals, so it took him a while again to settle in. So, we be looking for a big season off him, but the fact that Ross Stewart can play either side, will adapt that. So it is, it's, it's getting four strikers, getting the good ones, or getting the balance right for it, but ultimately scoring goals. Seven for uh, Ross Stewart, seven for Billy McKay, one for Lee Irwin, there has to be more than that, and that will be a target for this season. Is that the one thing that almost every manager in the <laughs> league looks for and says, if I can find a striker that will get me 20 goals, yeah. then that will save a lot of my worries. It makes a difference. You know, whether you, know, you, you can get someone who can score 20 goals 
at this level, if you can get somebody who can get you 13, 14, it makes a big difference. Because you go into games and thinking, we've got someone on form who can score goals. We've got someone who can win as a game. So um, it's finding that right one. Can that one player step up? Stuart will certainly hope so. Well, thank you very much for now. And you can see how it all pans out on the first game of the season, right here at the Global Energy Stadium on Monday night with Motherwell, the visitors. <laughs>
It's a, it's a great honour. Um, you know, I've played here a long time and I know what the club's about and I know what uh, we're all striving for. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, that, as you say, that added responsibility on and off the park. And what about um, the competition for places? Now, we spoke about that coming along track side there, particularly in your position in centre midfield. Mm -hmm. There's potentially six or seven midfield players yeah. going for maybe even three positions. But I think you need that for to have a competitive side. Of course, yeah. You, you can push each other on with, um, with having that. And as I say, there's seven, eight boys, but they're all quality. Yeah. Any one of us can play there and we just have to perform it the best we can and mm. see if we can stay that team. Motherwell first up, how much are you looking forward to that? Yeah, it's always good to play against Motherwell, especially, especially down there. Uh, I've had some good times, not so good the last time I was there, um, but no, we're looking forward to it. They've got a good young side, a lot of energy, a lot of quality, but we're prepared. Well, Ian, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck on Monday night as well. We're keeping Jamie busy and he's headed back to the dugout to catch up with the new CEO, Stephen Ferguson. Stephen, new job, global pandemic and Scottish football erupting into civil war all around us. How have the, the last few months been for you? Yeah, a challenge, yeah, I think, uh, but everybody will tell you the same. We as a football club's no different to, to anybody else. It has been a challenge. Um, and, and our football club has suffered like uh, every other football club as well in regarding the uh, we're having to look at a, a more streamlined structure we're having to uh, we're having to to look at ways that we can be more uh, sustainable moving forward to, to make sure that we can deliver what we want to deliver so uh, that's a challenge for for us but I take it that's a challenge for for every club as well yeah absolutely tell us a bit about the the procedures you've had to put in place to, to implement that streamlined model and what that might have had on the day-to-day the -day running of the club? Yeah, when we sat down you know, months ago now in, in, in regarding when, when this whole thing kicked off and, and uh, the chairman had a, a real foresight into thinking that this was going to be a problem and it was going to be a problem for a while. So uh, we were able to to at least start to plan to get to get things in place and, and unfortunately um, that, that came with a, a lot of big and tough decisions and, and to to be put in this position so early and then to have to be involved in new ones was, was a challenge but that's what the that's what this job is and this is what the uh, this is what has to be done yeah how have you found that that transition then personally from well, from tracksuit and training field and dugout to suit and boardroom and, yeah. and office meetings when you, when you're now one of the the key members in making those big decisions that you talked about i think it's i think it's it needs any time that's what I need time to have a look at and I need the time to, 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 to master what, what it is that is expected of me. But in regard, and all I've done has been, been involved in, in the football side uh, and through the years I've slowly crossed over into other bits and, and this is now where it becomes official that this is, this is the job that I've been asked to do by the chairman. This is the job I've been asked to do by the football club and, and I'm no different to anybody else in regard and I'm, a, I'm an employee of the football club as well. So um, you just have to get on with it the best you can and, and try to be as, as honest and as transparent as, as you can be with, with things that you're doing. We're, we're a small club in the Highlands of Scotland playing in the Premier League so we do have big challenges uh, in normal circumstances. I mean, we don't have a massive uh, uh, falling in regarding numbers but what we do have is a passionate group that are really, really loyal. Uh, and one thing we don't do is take them for granted. Uh, it's been a real difficult time in regarding communication uh, because we've tried to get out uh, and try to give them what we had as soon as we can so they can, they can, they can have the same information that we have. But we couldn't, do, we couldn't do it standing alone. We can't do it ourselves. And we do need, we do need the backings of our support. And, the, and we need them to be patient, I suppose, as well, in regarding that this is new to everybody. So anything that we're, anything that we're, we're any challenge we have just now is a new challenge. And, and we're obviously trying to navigate uh, as clear and as, as, as quickly as we can to make sure that, that uh, we get back on an even keel as, as quick as we can. Well, of course, Stephen has had such a heavy involvement with the first team and he's another man, as we've touched on before, who is still, he's really steeped in, in the traditions of this club. And that's the way I think Roy McGregor is wanting to build the club. You know, I'd said it earlier on, people can relate to them. You know, they understand and, and they probably get a little bit more goodwill than what someone from outside the area does. There's a little bit more loyalty. You know, they know the club inside out. Stephen's been involved in numerous roles throughout the club. 
Uh, and the fact that Roy keeps moving him up and progressing him tells me he's a really good, trustworthy guy. So um, I like it. You know, I like the setup. I like the the uh, the togetherness of everyone from staff to players. So, but ultimately, you can talk about all the good things. You have to win football matches, and Steve will know that, and Stuart will know that. That's their main responsibility, and uh, you know they hope it's going to be a successful season. Well, and particularly in this climate, it's vitally important to get the club running properly off the pitch as well. Well, it is. Listen, it's testing times for everyone. It, it, it's unknown in business, you know, and, and, and Roy McGregor being one of the most successful businessmen involved in Scottish football, yet, you know, there will be problems, there will be issues, trying to iron everything out. Um, getting the right off the pitch, getting the right on the pitch, there has to be a connection, no doubt about it. So the players have their part to play, the manager has their part to play, um, and I know the recruitment side of it is, is vitally important. I know they go out of their way to try and attract players here to the Highlands. It's a little bit different. It's a different market they're shopping in because, you know, it's so far away from everything else. But, you know, they always do well. I think they've done their work early this year. You know, they put a lot of effort into it. They went for specific targets and they got them. So it's um, it's a competitive squad. It, it's a good squad. And, and, you know, they will hope they can overachieve. Well, so far it's five additions. And as you say... The squad were back in early, getting back into training. They brought their new players in, got that recruitment done early. What have you made of the five that they brought in so far? Well, on their defensive record, it's no surprise they've brought in three defenders. You know, Carl Tremarco from Neighbours Inverness probably made sense. He knows the area. I think Alex Jacoviti, you know, is a young man with, with good potential. There's no doubt about it. Um, Stephen Kelly, midfield from Rangers. Rangers think very highly of him. They think he's a very good player. I think Conor Randall has got plenty of experience, probably knows Don Cowie from, you know, potentially being at heart. So, um, you know, that's good good additions. A little bit unknown, possibly, yes. And I think, uh, you know, Regan, Charles Cook, a little bit of pace, a little bit of creativity in the wide areas. As much as we spoke earlier on about strikers having to score goals, there has to be some, you know, industry in the wide areas. They have to have chances to score goals. They can't just go and make them themselves. So it's getting that balance right again. And as vital, it's keeping a hold of your, your core players from last season. Well, it is, but it's also your experienced players stepping up. You know, the likes of Liam Fontaine and Callum Morris, who's, who's vice captain, uh, Ian Vagas spoke to, who's the captain. Uh, Michael Gardine's an experienced player, Billy Mackay. You know, there's a wealth of experience in Scottish football. So they're the kind of players you need to lead on the training ground, set the example. You need them to lead on the pitch. Because as a manager, you can't always get your message across. You know, so if you're losing games, you're having a tough time, can those guys take control for you? So there's so many vital components of a successful team. And I just like the balance and the mix that Stuart has arrived at this season. Um, and, you know, let's hope it's you know, a, a good season, a productive season. And most importantly, you know, that's the first target club set out every season is, can we be a premiership club at the end of it? That's the minimum requirement. Anything above that is a bonus. Well, thank you very much, Stephen. And the fixtures come thick and fast. We've already talked about the Motherwell one on Monday night, then Ross County head down to Hamilton to face Hamilton Academical. Then it's two home games back here in Dingwall against Kilmarnock and then Dundee United. Well, thank you very much to my guest and pundit, Stephen Cragen. And we are really looking forward to Monday night. We've been waiting a long, long time. You have as well. On Monday night, it's Ross County against Motherwell. Please join us then. Thank you for watching.